Hello guys, it's me again, Sir Ernest, and today we are going to solve a problem involving vector potential. The problem reads, Find the magnetic vector potential of a finite segment of a straight wire carrying a current I. Put the wire on the z-axis from z1 to z2, then use equation 5.66. Check that your answer is consistent with equation 5.37. Okay, so first let's look at equation 5.66. So, as mentioned here, our wire or our, our current configuration is a straight wire. Okay, so that means we're going to look for the vector potential A for a line current and based on equation 5.66 this is equal to mu naught over 4 pi times integral of i vector over script r dl prime okay so for example if let's say we have a uh, a straight segment here okay and that is along the z-axis so let's say this is the direction of your z-axis okay and then let's choose this point somewhere around this one okay so if this is your origin therefore this distance is z1 and then this distance is z2 okay now let's choose a line element dl defined by this So let's say this is your dl prime. So let's call this dz. So this will now be our script r. And then, we can now calculate our uh, vector potential. So remember that the line segment can be defined in terms of S, if this is your S. And let's say this is your Z. That means script r is equal to square root of z squared plus s squared okay so now let's build our equation using this equation so vector potential is mu naught over 4 pi times the integral of i vector so in this case if our current is in this direction okay so therefore our i vector would be i z hat so remember it doesn't matter whether the i would be in this direction because uh, since our z direction is also arbitrary so it's reasonable to say that the current is flowing in the positive z direction and then this is equal this is divided by script r dz so therefore this is now equal to mu naught over 4 pi 
times remember i is a constant and then the z direction is constant so we can take this away from the or take this out of the integral so we now have i z hat and then what remains here is the integral of dz divided by square root of s squared plus z squared okay since our integral is along z so the limits of integration will be from z1 to z2 so therefore evaluating this we have mu naught i z hat divided by 4 pi times the natural logarithm of z plus square root of z squared plus s squared so this is the integral of this then it's evaluated from z1 to z2 so therefore our current uh, our magnetic vector potential a is now equal to mu naught i over 4 pi times the natural logarithm of z2 plus okay good z2 plus square root of z2 squared plus s squared divided by z1 plus square root of z1 squared plus s squared z hat so this is now your vector potential now let's check whether this answer is consistent with equation 5.37 so what is equation 5.37 okay so let's try to look it up okay 5.37 so equation 5.37 is given by b equals mu naught i over 4 pi s times sine theta 2 minus sine theta 1 so from here we can define what our thetas are so because this is z1 so we can define theta 1 to be this and then if this is the if this is z2 therefore we can define this as our theta 2 okay so how do we know this one remember that the magnetic field is related to the magnetic vector potential by this equation where magnetic field is equal to the curl of the magnetic vector potential okay because here as you notice that we're actually using the cylindrical coordinate system so therefore this curl will now be equal to negative partial derivative of a z with respect to s phi hat so phi hat is this direction okay this a z is this whole thing because this is your z component okay so so right now i want you to pause this video and try to calculate this 
okay okay so i hope you did a simple sit work there so as you find out that this is equal to mu naught i over 4 pi s times z2 over square root of c2 squared plus s squared minus z1 divided by square root of z1 squared plus s squared v hat now from our figure here we could see that z2 squared plus s squared square root is this length Okay, and this is Z. Okay, so that means if we're going to look at theta 2, theta 2 is related to this length and this length by the sine function. Okay, so this is actually equal to sine theta 2. Same goes here. We're in z1 is this square root of z1 squared plus s squared is this so this divided by this length is actually sine theta 1 which gives us the final form p equals mu naught i divided by 4 pi s times sine theta 2 minus sine theta 1 times p hat which is exactly this equation amazing right very easy okay so i hope you were you were able to calculate the simple partial derivative to derive this expression okay so this ends our solution to problem 5.23 i hope you learned something today and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye